Okay, the next thing that we're going to talk about is your cloning system. Now what you can do to start with is take the tray <clears throat> and take the lid off of the tray. And you'll notice that inside you have several different items. You have your cloning solution, which you can actually take and dip your, clo your cuttings into. You have your 72 site insert tray, which is where we'll actually stick the organic uh, starter plugs. And then you have a black tray underneath, which you actually uh, fill with water. But when you fill that with water, you only want to fill it about halfway. You don't want to fill the uh, black tray completely to the top, um, or you may get some issues with the water um, getting stagnant. All right, so next what we'll do is we're going to quickly show you how to take a clone of the plant. Now originally when you start off, we, we have the plant in the other room, but we what we did is we took a razor blade and we cut off um, at the base of the plant stem. You can see here at a 45 degree angle. And you want to you want to make sure that when you take your clone you have at least uh, between two and five leaves at the base of the stem uh, and at the point where you have some inner nodes to ensure that um, you have enough uh, enough leaves for the plant to begin photosynthesis. <clears throat> now normally when you do cloning you don't want to do it too far into the flowering cycle because if you do there can be hormones that affect um, the ability of the clone to take up uh, nutrients. Now what you're going to do is take your clone and dip it for a second or two into your cloning gel. As you can see the bottom of it is lightly coated. Uh, the cloning gel consists mainly of B vitamins and other uh, compounds to help the, uh, the actual stem to take root. You're going to take the base of the stem, stick it into the cloning plug, push it down about halfway, usually about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch, um, just like you saw Joe do here. Now that organic squishy plug that he placed it into is made up of bark and latex, which acts as a medium for supporting the roots as they begin to grow and um, providing moisture to the stem. Now you're going to take the plug, insert it into the 72 cell tray, which once again you can do up to 72 clones in this tray, but you don't need to use all of them. You can do five, you can do ten. As a matter of fact, some of the clones you can even um, let grow to be about a foot tall, and you can use those to take other clones um, from. So in effect, you actually can use them as mother plants. And because in the cloning chamber you have 24 hours of light and a permanent veg cycle, um, this isn't a problem. It won't actually cause the clones to go into flowering um, so long as they're under the 24 hours of fluorescent light. So what we'll do, we're not going to do it right now, but what you would do is fill up the tray halfway with water, make sure that all of those organic squishy plugs are wicking up enough moisture that they stay lightly wet, and you're going to put your humidity dome on top. Now with that humidity dome, you'll see that there's actually vent holes in the top portion of it. Now, when you're actually cloning, you want the inside of this tray to be to have condensation on it, but not be dripping. So you want a light amount of condensation. If it's dripping, you want to open up these holes to allow for more fresh air, um, so too much condensation doesn't form, um, which allows your humidity to be around 90%, but not as high as 98 to 100, um, which, which is a little too wet. Now the reason you want that much condensation um, and you want that much moisture in your air is because the leaves, the stomata of the leaves are actually going to open up and take in the water which is going to allow them um, when, even when they don't have roots to take in enough water to continue photosynthesis and growing. So it's super important that in the beginning the inside of this um, chamber stays nice and humid. So now that we have our, our cloning chamber set up, we're going to take it and place it into the upper portion of the unit. You can see it slides right in and with your system comes a separate cloning light. Now this light has a white power cord attached which once again you're going to remove the zip ties and <clears throat> simply take that cord that's attached to it and you're going to extend it through a hole that's in the upper right hand corner of the unit. You can't see it very well in the footage here but you can see Joe pressing it through it actually makes a bit of a seal and it comes out the back of the unit which will swing around so that you can see. <clears throat> it's actually coming out right here and what he's going to do is pull on that cord and in effect plug it right into the power strip um, along with the remaining other items that you have. Now you want to make sure not to put this light on a timer it has to be on 24 hour constant light 
to ensure that your clones get enough light to continue function and to keep them from going into the flowering stage. Now on a side note, <clears throat> something to keep in mind is that when you're doing this, the reason we do not have a light that's more powerful than this small fluorescent, relatively small fluorescent, is because we don't want the plants to grow too quickly. Um, if we put a powerful light in there, they would quickly overgrow the chamber and um, you know you, you basically wouldn't be able to clone efficiently from one cycle to another. Um, another issue is that if we put a, a more powerful light in, you would also have uh, problems with possibly scalding the plants. You actually want a very weak light um, to ensure that they have just enough to continue photosynthesis but not enough to burn them uh, or to cause an effect uh, called scorching where the actual light um, can uh, interact with the water droplets on the leaves and actually burn them. So whenever you're doing cloning you want a relatively um, weak fluorescent light or LED panel and um, that is it for cloning.